What happened? You have been initiated. Huh? Let's move. We haven't much time. D time For what? Until the parasite takes hold of you again. You're weak, but you now have eyes to see. What, what am I looking at? Where am I? Like most everyone you know, you have been hijacked by a parasite. The parasite was born of game A, the game you've been playing your whole life. It tells you how to think, feel, and what to do. Now that you are temporarily free of its influence, we'd like to take you on a journey. Uh, a journey? To where? A journey to Game B. The journey to Game B is a story about the relationship between humanity, technology, and nature. It's a story not only about survival, but the potential for thriving. You and your tribe will be among the first people to play Game B. We have traced our steps back to the beginning, just before the dawn of human civilization. Before Game A, there was the first game. The first game was our most enduring and successful game. A game we played for over 100,000 years. Our nomadic ancestors stood apart from their natural cohabitants in their special ability to adapt across all bioregions of the Earth. The key to their adaptability was culture, a new strategy for group cooperation. These early nomadic cultures operated within principles of wholeness and regeneration. The first game was of course multiplayer. Each player is necessary to sustain the principle of wholeness by stewarding the cycle of regeneration. All players must be present and respect each other's roles. Roles? I am the sage who seeks truth and ensures its transmission to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the mind. I am the chief who seeks to build a better world for the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the body and its extensions. I am the Mitriac who gives life and purpose to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the heart. Which role am I? As a Game B pioneer, you must do what is yours to do and bring together all of the necessary roles to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. The parasite. It's waking up. We have to hurry. You mustn't allow the creature to take hold. Breathe deeply and keep your wisdom centers open. Come. Nature's abundance functions in a constant state of regenerative motion. This is wholeness. As stewards, all players in the human tribe must move with nature's cycles, as our nomadic ancestors once did. Here, take this talisman. In the first game, cooperation was the rule within each tribe. By utilizing the co-creative strategy of culture, each player felt a sense of membership and belonging in their tribe. All tribes were indigenous to a specific place on Earth, our bioregions, like here, along the Cascade Range. Each tribe grew niches around the habitats available to it. This is true for all living beings. Shelters, tools, weapons, clothing and medicines, all made from resources that were immediately available to them and skillfully constructed with knowledge of the local plants and animals. 
Although neighboring tribes were regarded as dangerous, the most resilient of tribes traded goods and knowledge in patterns of both cooperation and competition. For a long time, the number of tribes across all bioregions innately respected the principle of wholeness, so they stayed in a harsh but steady balance with nature. But even nature's bounty has her limits. Over time, the first game became so successful, the number and size of tribes grew large, forcing us into close proximity with one another. Once we were no longer free to roam, we had no choice but to settle in place and competition intensified for nature's bounty. A new game emerged. Game A. Where are we now? Or when? Here, we stand before the cradle of civilization at the birth of Game A. As competition increased, the tribe began to lose its instinctual ability to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. Game A is the game of growth, rivalry, control, and accumulation. Human settlement meant the accumulation and control of resources, knowledge, and people. The race to accumulate and control accelerated faster and faster, and competition began to dominate cooperation. Though necessary to advance the human tribe, Game A would prove to be fragile. Even the players that depended on each other began to compete with one another. The players assumed control and dominion over nature's land and her bounty and over each other. Before long, culture would be divided into rigid class structures and those with the greatest accumulation sat at the top of an exclusive hierarchy. What we do to nature, we do to ourselves. The strategy of culture itself underwent diverse adaptation as empires competed for more and more accumulation and control and killed off those who couldn't or wouldn't play the new game. In our race to master Game A, nature's stewardship was lost. Because Game A's technology takes from nature without bothering to give back, it is fundamentally exploitative. The strategy of rivalry and accumulation led to the exponential development of complicated technologies. Since these technologies require extraction from the geosphere, Eventually, they become lethal to the biosphere. As the game continues to advance, our global ecosystems are collapsing. All the while, our technologies are gaining the potential for destruction and depletion on a vast scale. Compared to the first game, however, Game A is young and its players are novice. When the principles of wholeness and regeneration are abandoned, there is only one fate, self-termination. Indeed, all empires since the beginning of Game A have risen only to later be forced into disintegration. The pattern is clear now. We must play a new game if we are to survive and thrive. Game B. Wait, wait. does that mean going back? to the first game? No, the only way out is through. It is very important that we must take what we have learned from game A, then once again move to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. The parasite you carry with you is an object of control and blind adherence to the rules of game A. It was set upon you in your earliest years. The Parasite makes sure that you conform to Game A by conditioning you to view yourself as separate from nature and from other people so that you forget the principle of wholeness and your purpose as a steward of the Earth. 
The parasite knows only one god, the modern growth-based economy. But you can free yourself from its grasp. How? By starting with what you did at the outset of this journey, asking more questions than trying to provide answers will open your mind. By first finding what is yours to do, then building meaningful relationships with those whom you need to work with. This will open your heart. And finally, by acting and creating from a place of integrity within your tribe, this will train your body to play game B. The more you keep these wisdom centers open and sustain the principle of wholeness within yourself, your tribe and the world, the less the parasite will have influence over you. Oh, is this Game B? The story of Game B is not yet written nor guaranteed, but its potential is real. Now more than ever, the world needs our creativity and stewardship to create the conditions for life to thrive. The challenges that face humanity are far too complex for one person or tribe to fathom. The crises we see, ecological, political, social and educational, are interconnected. To face this meta-crisis, we must consciously revitalize our tribe's special ability to adapt quickly with a co-creative strategy of culture. And we must do so in a bioregional mesh network across the globe. Restoring this co-creative engine to the human tribe will once again allow cooperation to outcompete competition, leading to an exodus out of Game A. Therefore, by the rules of Game B, the meta-crisis cannot be solved by a single tribe or ideology. The key is to expand our intertribal cooperation to the global scale. And for this, we will need open and decentralized access to our Game A technologies, along with a culture rejuvenated by wholeness. Nature creates humans. Humans create technology. And technology must be used to support the integrity of nature. Game A strategy of driving rivalrous innovation and production while continuing extraction must come to an end. At the heart of this co-creative strategy of culture is a space to rediscover each other and our relationship with nature. As we learn about our role as stewards, we will revive the principles of wholeness and regeneration. Like our own bodies, the Game B tribe must protect the heart. We start by acting locally while thinking globally. Like our nomadic ancestors, our economies become bioregional. This time, however, they are interconnected by a global mesh with the assistance of our technology. Tribe selection is the driving force of human evolution. What will distinguish us from our nomadic ancestors is our cooperation on all scales, from the individual player to the neighborhood to the village, to the tribe, to the city, to the bioregion, to the globe, and someday across the galaxy. Like the fungal networks beneath our feet, a rich system of channels for cooperation and movement will enable us to respond to the global challenges we face. The work required to achieve this vision is today incomprehensible. But it is time to play. Every day you must return to the symbol of wholeness to loosen the parasite's grasp. By keeping your wisdom centers open, you can let go of your conditioned ways of being. Lead with your strengths 
and find others who are committed to do the same. Make sure that your tribe has strengths in all three forms of wisdom and that you respect each other's roles. Then and only then can you start to play Game B. There is a future of thriving that awaits us. It would be a shame to miss it. <laughs>